Shortly before midnight on August 29, 2020, 24-year-old Heriberto Marquez left his residence on Aranistan Ave and began walking south. Heriberto Marquez would never again return home. Heriberto crossed over State Street and continued walking south. He eventually crossed over Hanover Street. As he approached the second tree on his right, Heriberto was approached by a suspect who shot him in the head. Heriberto Marquez fell to the sidewalk and was later pronounced dead on the scene. A white SUV was seen fleeing the area. This is the sound of the actual gunshot that killed Heriberto Marquez. Bridgeport police homicide detectives believe the suspect who shot Heriberto Marquez, as well as those who planned his murder, searched for him, followed him, and waited for him drove these streets, Aranistan Ave, Hanover Street, Norman Street, and State Street. Detectives also believe that those suspects may also live in this neighborhood, which straddles the south end and the west side of the city. The homicide unit believes there is a person watching this video who can provide the major break this case needs. If that person is you, please make the call. The number is 203. 581-5243 and 203-576-TIPS. I'm Detective Jeffrey Holtz with the Homicide Unit of the Bridgeport Police Department. I'm here at the intersection of Aranistan Ave and Hanover Street, where shortly before midnight on August 30th, 2020, Heriberto Marquez was shot and killed in what can only be described as an execution-style murder at this spot. Nobody knows why shortly before he was killed, Heriberto Marquez walked from his father's residence one block south of here to his residence one block north of here, and then walked back to this spot where he met his fate. Detectives have released a photograph of the suspect vehicle. They have names of potential suspects, but now we need somebody who witnessed the murder of Heriberto Marquez or has inside information to come forward. Heriberto's mother, Elizabeth Delgado, and his uncle, Juan Ballester, have been on a mission to get justice for Heriberto. I recently sat down and interviewed both. Here are those very emotional conversations. Um, he cared a lot about his family. He um, has a niece and a nephew that he loved dearly. Um, he loved playing video games. You know, he likes music. You know, he would give his shirt off his back for anybody. He, he would help anybody and just don't expect nothing in return, nothing at all. When he was living at home, um, wherever I went, he was there. Um, when I went out, he would call me. Um, if you look to the left, he was there. If you look to the right, he was there. Um, you know, I was his mommy. I was his, his priority. It was horrible. When I got the call from my husband to tell me that I needed to come to my mother-in-law's house because something happened to my son, I was calling my son on his cell phone and I was telling him to hold on that mommy was coming. Unfortunately, he didn't get the call. It was devastating. It was devastating when I got there. My daughter was the one that pulled me to the side and I'm telling her, Tommy was your brother, Tommy was your brother. And she just held me by my arm 
And she looked at me and said, Mom, Marcus is dead. Someone killed them. I went crazy. My heart just left my soul. If you know what happened, please say something. This can be your child. This can be your brother, your uncle, or anything, niece, nephew, whatever it is. And you would want closure the same way I want closure. It won't be the same because although I get the closure, my son is never coming back. But just to know that the people involved are incarcerated for what they did to my child. I just want somebody to come forward, please. Nobody want to walk in my shoes. Not right now, you don't want to walk in my shoes. The love I had for her Roberto was more than a nephew. Like I said, he was, he was like my son. So I got a call late night, we are in bed, from my sister-in-law's husband, saying that um, her Roberto was just murdered. And uh, we jump out of our out of our bed and get dressed and head to the scene. And it was like a horror movie. It was a scene that you see on TV where someone gets murdered and it's all taped off and all I could still see is the red and blue lights flashing, people screaming, me trying to compose and stay composed and keep everyone calm, trying to keep my sister long calm over the phone as she's driving from her destination to the scene. It was a tragic, traumatizing night. For the people out there that know something, just remember that gun violence is getting worse. Your children are playing in the playgrounds. Your children are riding bike. Your kids are waiting for a bus to go to school, getting off of a bus, coming from school. Just remember that if you want a better community, you want a better and safe community, you want the society to get better with gun violence, you and only you, the public, can make a difference in this world. Nobody else. If we don't come together as a community and as a public, society's not gonna get better. Communities are gonna be unsafe. And you just sit there and you just ask yourself, how can I make a difference? You can make a difference by, if you see something, say something. Don't be afraid because if you were in our shoes and in our situation, there's no doubt in my mind that this family, if we lived in that community, we would help you get justice. So for everyone that's looking for justice from all these homicides that are happening, and these families, not only our family, but other families need help with justice, you, the public, can make a difference. Hundreds turn out in Bridgeport today for a march in memory of 24-year-old murder victim Herberto Marquez. The event organized by the victim's family along with school board member Bobby Brown with marchers walking down Norman Street and ending at Wentfield Park. Marquez was killed in a shooting one week ago, one of three murders taking place over a three day period. The victim's uncle calling the march a step in the right direction towards ending gun violence. It will not be easy. It will not happen overnight, but we have to start somewhere. Change can start now. By us uniting today is a step in the right direction. There is no community, no neighborhood, no home that is immune from gun violence.